Hello everyone, my name is Sydney, so is S and so high on school too, and welcome back to the Kent Coast Walk. I am finally back after 17 whole months of hiatus. Um, it's been crazy long how long I've been away from this, but we are back in Gravesend. My mum is holding the camera again, like in the first one, and um, do you want to say hi? Hello! <laughs> and so, uh, let's get going. So as promised at the end of the last one, back in April of 2018, we would start off with the Pocahontas statue in Gravesend, and here she is. So in today's video we are going from Gravesend to Cliff, which uh, takes us further along the Thames estuary. Um, we're going through the rest of Gravesend, we did like half of Gravesend last time, and now onto the other half of it, and that leads us into the countryside and onto the Hoo Peninsula, where we shall head inland and meet Cliff. Uh, there aren't any like settlements between Gravesend and All's Hallow on um, the Hoo Peninsula, so we're going to go inland quite a bit to get to the end of each walk, even though it's not on the coast. Uh, that's just where we're going to be able to like park our car or get a bus back home afterwards. We are using Ordnance Survey number 163 from Gravesend, well Gravesend and Rochester, Hoo Peninsula map right here. That's the map that we're using today. Um, I think last time we used a different map, so this is the first time this map's going to be in use. And I think, uh, without any more hesitation, we should get going with the walk. Here we are, back at the Thames. Um, this is where I finished off th on the coast officially last time. So we're gonna continue on from here, down that way. There's this whole like wall here now, where there was like a square before, so it looks a bit different here from when I was last here. Um, but yeah, there's the water. There's the, the little like jetty thing that goes across to Till. Is it Tilbury? I think so. They have like a ferry that goes across. Uh, we're gonna go around to the other side of that and continue on our walk. I've been so excited to get back to this walk. It's like it's been so long, and I hate that there was such a big hiatus for this. But but now I'm back at it. I'm really determined to do the whole Kent Coast walk now. Um, it's going to be my main priority for my channel for the next year or so, however long it takes me. I know if I do like two a month, that's going to be. Um, it's gonna take over a year at least. I think it was like 13 months or something if I do two walks a month. Um, maybe I can do it in about a year if I do more, but we'll have to see. Gravesend Blockhouse. Sounds oddly similar to that place in a, that uh, building in France that I saw on my camping trip. But there it is, the remains of it. 
This walk also marks the start of the Saxon Shoreway. The previous uh, two coast walks of uh, Kent were not a part of the uh, Saxon Shoreway, where this one is. Um, and quite a lot of our Kent coast walk will be a part of the Saxon Shoreway. Got 37 miles to London, 1,111 miles to Inverness. Uh, 85 miles to Dover, blimey, is that how many miles I've got to walk to get there? And Amsterdam is 345 miles. Huh, so it's closer to get to Amsterdam than it is to get to Inverness. Welcome to Gordon Promenade. Nice and open over here. Wow. Oh, the views of the Thames are fantastic here. Compared to the last time, where it was all industrially, this is so nice. Oh, would you look at this? We found the beach of Gravesend. Right there. It's about five centimeters across. You can probably fit about four people on here. Whoa. Look, I'm on the beach. <laughs> oh my gosh. There you go. Gravesend's beach. Maybe I should uh, come do some sunbathing here, right next to the Thames as the uh, as the boats go by. to more uh, industrial territory now with this big rusted building there is a public right of way despite what looks might suggest so oh my gosh um, <laughs> it's getting a bit spooky this is much more reminiscent of the. F <laughs> There's a toilet there, aren't we? Much more reminiscent of the uh, the second walk with all the industrialness. As of last time, we find ourselves in the middle of an industrial area, with the path leading us this way down an alleyway of sorts. Kind of want to get through this area kind of quick because there's some dodgy people. It's like we've come from lovely, nice park on the Thames coast to scary industrial area with dodgy people around every corner. Uh, I hope we make it okay. So we made it out of the super dodgy alleyway and there's just like these three houses in the centre of this industrial estate. So I'm not too sure who lives there but um, it's a bit of an odd place for like three random houses. And there's also these gigantic rusty um, anchor things from the, from the sea. And there's also like a really nice little little lighthouse-y sort of thing there which looks really cute. Not that I'm trying to be mean about anyone who lives in those houses because um, that's not what I'm doing at all. It's what I'm trying to say is like 
those three houses just on their own, surrounded by like what seems like miles of industrial estate. It's, it's just a bit of an odd place for those houses to have been built. <laughs> Another example of how random these paths, these uh, public right-of-ways are that go through industrial areas, there's just a path that's squeezed in between like a big industrial opening and like industrial like entrance, like cars drive along here with like big trucks and stuff. And you just got a public right of way right here, which we go down. I believe this is going to take us to a pub, possibly. Maybe. Oh, there's the pub. Oh. Through the squiggle squiggle. Here we are at the very edge of Gravesend, and this is pretty much the last building, this pub, which is open because there's quite a lot of people inside. But it seems like, other than the fact it's situated in this industrial area, it's kind of a nice view from up here. We found another beach. I always love seeing these little beaches along the Thames estuary because it reminds me of the uh, the beaches that are to come later on. What a lovely jetty! And this is sort of the end of Gravesend now. We're about to go into the countryside just further ahead there. Uh, that pub was the last building. <laughs> Up and over we go. Mum, you're going the wrong way. in the countryside. They're coming from the mythical lands of the red grass. These magical beings. They're so majestic.
Okay, I'm hoping it won't last long, but the rain sort of picked up a little bit out of nowhere as we were filming those horses, and uh, hopefully it'll stop soon and it'll all be sunshine and rainbows. Um, maybe not rainbows because you need rain for rainbows, just the sunshine. Um, we're nearly at, um, I think it's called Sean Mead Fort. <laughs> okay. Sean Mead Fort. Ah, this will be a nice place to sit down for a little while. Okay, I'm supposed to climb this, but um, <laughs> maybe if I. Uh, bear with me. Uh. Hmm. Um. Ah, maybe here. It's like, it's quite a bit of a rubbish unfortunately, but other than that, it's like a really fun place to explore, I think. And you got some horses down there, and it looks like some work going on there. Um, I wonder what they're doing. But I'm surprised this isn't like a more touristy place for people to visit and explore. As you can see over there, lots of rubbish. People need to stop doing this. I've seen so much rubbish along all these walks. And down there it's even worse. Like, look at that. That's terrible. There should be somewhere that's like preserved, but it's got all this like rubbish everywhere. What's this? Lovely little historic tunnel. What's that at the end of it? Wow, a pile of plastic.
Wow, that was really interesting. We met a um, we met a guy in there who has a YouTube channel, and uh, they're like exploring the tunnels underneath the falls, which I'm like, whoa. Um, I didn't go in the tunnels, but maybe I could come back if I felt like it with a bigger group of people. We're just about to sit down and have something to eat by the water because it's sort of like a nice halfway point. Over here we have um, some of the rubbish that my mum's picked up today. Um, it's always good to pick up rubbish when you find it. And we also saw a seal out there, so picking up rubbish saves the seals. Magnificent seal. I just wanted to give some facts over there. That is Essex, as we probably established in previous videos, but I just wanted to re establish it. And then here, we're going around the coast to about there ish, where we head inland. And this big area here is where the Thames actually turns and heads north, and then it turns that way. So, that is the Hoo Peninsula which sticks out into the Thames. Mum, I think I've made a friend. Hey! turn over here and you can see on the horizon there is Cliff Fort and I'm gonna say we are officially on the Hoo Peninsula now I'm pretty sure um, which is a very isolated peninsula in Kent um, I think after this like getting into Cliff the next walk from Cliff to High House Stowe, that's going to be 11 miles just because there's no settlement on the coast. I think I said this earlier, but yeah, I have to go out to the coast, along the coast, and then back in again. But that'll be next time. So here we are, we're at the bend of the Thames. Um, we've been bending for quite a while, but now we're fully going like north. And behind me, we're gonna follow that path where my mum's gone. And over here, we get the first sight of the cliff pools, which will sort of make it look like we've got water on both sides of us. But really, they're completely enclosed lakes. Um, but they're pretty uh, picturesque with lots of birds and wildlife. This next stretch of coast, I'm under the impression has a lot of erosion, so we'll have to see how well we can get through.
I think I'm gonna call this the windy stretch. shot I'm going to get of Cliff Falls because it's entirely within the grounds of an industrial company unfortunately but I do hope that one day um, they might let the public visit as like a, a tourist attraction because it's very well preserved as you can see some really cool little steps here that lead down to this and there's a barrel that's like moving in the water there and then back up the other steps there Here you can really see the tiny strip of land the industrial um, area has allowed us to walk through. Oh wow, oh and up ahead there's like a really cool, oh my gosh, look at this! The public right of way goes right under this little tunnel, right there. Isn't that cool? This is the last little stretch before we turn away from the coast. Right there, we've got Cliff Creek, which we're gonna go down, and then at the end of that creek, that's where we say goodbye to the Kent coast for today, and uh, head to the village of Cliff. Um, tomorrow, well, not tomorrow, next time, <laughs> we'll be continuing over by that concrete wall there and around. And here we are at the end of the coast for today. Uh, we're going to be following Cliff Creek just here, inland, to the end of Cliff Creek, which technically counts as a coast until we get to the end of it. And that's where we leave the coast and head into the village of Cliff. <laughs> I think Mum's gone to go scramble some more wood from the beach. <laughs> she likes collecting wood. Um, yeah, we'll get some nice shots of Cliff the village and, um, wow, overall this has been the least tiring of the three walks that we've done on the coast, I think. My mum agrees too, even though she's only just done the first one and the third one. Um, 
And this is also my favourite out of the three. It's, it's felt much more countryside, so much more like just wide open spaces with nature and the landscapes and even Grape Zend was really nice. Um, the only the only bit that was a bit iffy was the industrial bit in Grape Zend. But other than that, it's been a real adventure. And just look at this view. It's so beautiful. I can't wait to continue down that side and onwards. I must say, it's been such a lovely walk today. And I think if you can get through the first two walks, there are definitely things on the first two walks that are, are lovely. But this walk is well worth it for the Kent Coast. Goodbye Thames. See you another day. If anyone can tell me what these berries are in the comment section, I'd really like to know because they look absolutely horrifying. Here we are at the end of Cliff Creek, which basically counts as a coast, even though I said we were leaving the coast at the Thames. Um, because you have to go around it to continue anyway. But there you go, that's the end of Cliff Creek. And now we've got the direct path going inwards to the village of Cliff. And that takes us along like a little path with two lakes on both sides, so it should be really nice. Um, and then we'll have like a look at a couple of the buildings in Cliff and that'll be the video. And also just to add on to that, this will be the spot that I will be starting the next Kent Coast Walk from Cliff to High House Doe. So you'll be seeing this location again. We found the village of Cliff. That last stretch was very long. <laughs> we have made it to Cliff. Yay! I still stand by this being the easiest walk despite the um the rather tiring last stretch. I had something in my eye there, so that's why I was going like all funny. But they have this lovely little tunnel underneath a house, right here, that leads straight through to the church. So let's make our way through. Church. I believe it's called St. Helen's Church? Maybe? I'll have a look at the sign at the entrance, but wow. It's rather lovely. And it's a lovely way to end off our walk. Time for the bus. Though we actually drove here, we don't need the bus. But if you need the bus, there is a bus that goes from Cliff to the Medway Downs. I think there's one from Cliff to Gravesend too, but there's the Medway bus. Here's the step counter that we did. Blimey. And they also have a nice 
with the Six Bells Shepherd's Neem pub. If you want to have a nice meal or drink at the end of your walk, there's a pub uh, logo up there.